this is your references. Uh, you can get to them through DTMS. I did the same thing she did. Uh, here's the agenda. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, but uh, the, the bottom line is uh, each unit's mission kind of dictates what they need to train on. So how do we get there? How do we know what the mission is? How do we know uh, specifically what we're going to be doing in the future as, as we determine what our training plan is going to be? We've got to have some guidance, right? At the brigade and higher level, DA tells us what, we're, what our primary METs are going to be, and we don't really have a choice at the brigade. But we have some, we have some choices within that, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, uh, of what we train at the brigade headquarters. But below the brigade, the battalions and company level, it's got to be mission oriented. Okay, I kind of think I've talked this slide also. Big, big point here is that the, uh, the METs are RDA directed for us, and I'll show you those in a minute. There's been changes since last year at this time, uh, and they have subordinate task groups. At the battalion level, they can be a number of things, just collective tasks. But they have to nest and fall up underneath my brigade headquarters metal task. They can't just go out there off the wall and go, we're going to do something that has nothing to do with the brigade's metal. It all has to fall under that same nesting. And it goes all the way down to the individual task level. So battalion medals can be collective tasks, task groups, or task selections. And company medals, as you drill on down, same thing. As you're going through this, and as you're determining what you want to train on, if you did, if you did your unit's entire possible spectrum of, of missions, it would be way too much in a training year to train on. Okay, this is kind of what the hierarchy looks like, how that nesting works. Everything is it's like a building block. It starts all the way, it goes all the way down to the individual tasks that the soldiers train on. I'm not gonna read this slide to you. Just this, you know, I put this in there so you guys will have this information to take home with you. But just go down here, this, this final thing. Those are the questions that each commander has to ask as they develop their own medal. What's their higher headquarters mission and medal, and what does that commander want me to do to support that mission? That's, that's the important thing here. Let's look through that in just a second. Treating casualties is treating casualties. Okay, Checking water supplies by our PM detachments. Doesn't matter if it's in a war environment or if it's in a hurricane, it just hit the coast. Does that make sense? You can just kind of go through, uh, underneath each of these arts, Army tactical tasks, there's a whole bunch of collective tasks. And that's where we can kind of, as brigades, kind of drill down and say, where are our weaknesses? Or what is the mission going to dictate to where we can kind of deviate away from doing the same thing every year, year after year? So that, that metal assessment, and where the weaknesses of your units are at is where you're gonna have your commander focus his training each year. Like I said, these are in there just for your information. Uh, they're available at ATM. Uh, but they're in the slide deck just for you guys to look at. You can see here, we get down, if, if you're going to a, a mission and it doesn't require uh, dental support, why would you train on managed preventive dentistry? That's an example of doing that mission analysis and determining what does my headquarters need to be able to do. Just going to get on through this. Uh, this was from a slide deck that, that one of my NCOs sent to me. And basically it's just a, it's just a rehash of, of what we talked about earlier, how, how it rolls all the way down. How it's all nested underneath everything else. And, but it starts up here at the top. And, and that's why it's important that we get the division's YTB guidance earlier in the year than we've been getting it. Okay, I think I've talked this already. Kind of, kind of beating a dead horse a little bit. We'll go on down. 
Same thing. This is more at the, for, for the war fighters, what they're directed to do. More rehashment of what I've been talking about already. We'll keep going. The reason I put this slide in there is because sometimes we get wrapped around the axle. Well, you didn't, you didn't specify that I was supposed to train on that. You didn't tell me I needed to train on that. You didn't tell me that was part of my mission. Well, as good planners and trainers, there are some things that are implied. When a commander selects only a portion of his metal task and his collective task, individual task to train on, the higher commander is, is, has to be willing to accept some risk, some training risk, in allowing that subordinate unit not to train on everything. That's something we do and it, as, as commanders that our commanders have to be able to do. They have to be able to afford their subordinates opportunities to take risk. In Seagullville, Texas, we would never take an APFT on the track that we use if commanders weren't willing to take risk. Okay, same thing with training. We have to be willing to take risks and say, we're not going to train on everything. And what happened if we're, you know, next year we're going to CSTX and we have specific things we're going to train on based upon the exercise, and all of a sudden the balloon goes up and they say, 176, you and your subordinates are going to support a mission that you haven't trained for at all. Hopefully, the risks that we took as units can be mitigated in that time that we had to prepare for that mission. There is a little window in there, we'll, and, and if we've done a good analysis of what we're already trained on, it's not that great of a risk. The things that we miss, we'll be able to jump into and pick up uh, very quickly. What are your questions?